Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday Night Nightcap. Tonight's Nightcap's got the normal mixture, a little bit of machining, a little bit of plasma cutting, and I think there's some welding. There's some more names coming from the draw. I thought it was tonight, but it's not. It's the first Sunday, so it's next week. So if you haven't got your name in, all you have to do is send me an email containing your name, and your name goes into the bucket. And if it's drawn out, there's some fantastic prizes. It'll be posted off to you anywhere in the world completely free of charge in the last three i've actually gone to america to america and one to canada the er32 in er40 collet spanners uh, sold very well on ebay thanks very much to anybody that's bought one they should all be there know they're all posted off in the middle of last week i had quite a few people ask if i could do an er25 one well i've done a drawing and i've cut some out so the er25s are now listed as well uh, the eight numbers in the, the beginning of the video. I'm taking the wife away on uh, Thursday morning, I'm going away for a, like a short weekend break. Um, we're going out to see Rob at Extreme Engineering, so it's a bit like a busman's holiday, but we're definitely going to spoil the girls, take them out and do, uh, do some girly things, as well as probably quite a lot of filament, uh, plasma tables and machines. This is a thermostat spacer off an A series engine. And what I need to do is cut off that pipe there and weld another pipe in at that sort of angle. That needs to be 5 eighths or 16 mil OD. I'm not sure what this will weld like. Um, it looks like shite, we'll sure find out. I think the first thing is I'll do a machine that bit first and chop that off. Weld that on, then I'll drill the hole through once it's been welded on. Nice and true, straight out of the out of the box, so to speak. Mm -hmm. oh, Nine mil off that. I mean, here I sent us in some bar ends, aluminium and brass. Uh, I've seen the same machines, it's nice good stuff, it's nice to machine. One mil. Thing on there for the roasted one, though, something like that. There's something for the roasted grip on, do.
I'm trying to roll it before I actually part it off. Here and then the end, and the clutch is working good as well. The braking affects back the way it should be. Take a little bit of that off, slightly too big to stretch it. Five years here, I'll go over. Looks better. Back onto me really untidy workbench. Remove the, remove that. I'll make a little plug well into there, just to make life easy for myself. Do I think? That brake's brilliant now on that. Excellent, that'll do. It's not the prettiest thing I've ever created, but it's certainly well done and it won't leak. This is like a die cast zinc material, I knew it would be shite. And I've had to build up that edge where it melted away. So I thought I'm going to the chuck and just skim that face up and drill his hole through there, and that's basically the job done. Just a really nice light cut across there. The 
little bit more, it's just about there. I'll turn it over and do the other side just because I can. That's the job done. Oh, I've got to drill the hole through there. But I've done what they call a suck test. Like you suck off at you and put your tongue over the end to seal that and it doesn't leak so it, it doesn't leak back you and it'll not leak water in or water out. Put a drill through there and that's the job done. So there's plenty of material on here where it could be blended in with a file to make it look a bit more authentic but that's up there. You can also make this hole big if he wants it. I think it's just a bleed so it doesn't need to be. The clutch on the lathe has been running great since I repaired it last week. Uh, one of my viewers has sent us in a modification to go inside the gearbox. So I'm going to have a look inside here just to see if it, it has been done. I don't think it has. It's a very simple modification that can cause or they can save a lot of problems actually. The red gloves come from a lad called Mark from Autosmart International. He sent us some gloves and some brake cleaner and some hand cleaner. Thanks very much Mark, I do appreciate it. That's certainly a little bit different. I don't think I would dare wear them at work. Right, we need to top off this. On this headstock as a magnet, there on the bottom of the fill-up plug, and the oil actually runs around that gallery and down into there. Now what the lad has sent us is a really strong magnet, a really strong magnet, and that goes into there on his lathe, but his lathe is different to mine, there isn't enough room for it. So I'm going to try and put it down in the bottom of the gearbox, just to collect any debris. I didn't get all of the roll pin out or all the broken pin out of it. Um, I'm not sure where the last third little bit went to, and it would make a mess if it gets minced up in those gears so we'll try and get this down in the bottom of the gearbox don't know it's going to be difficult because it wants to stick the, the gears it doesn't want to play but I'm sure we'll get it in somewhere and then anything that's floating about in there is going to stick to the magnet Dear God, it's strong. 
<laughs> really, that really is incredibly strong. Lad. Come on, you bastard. <laughs> in fact, anywhere in the gearbox, it's going to catch. Anything that's floating about, we'll push it down there. Don't pass that bit of casting. When I used to work on the, the old minis and Cooper S's, they had magnets on the sump plugs and they used to get gear teeth and all kinds of stuck to them. Right, we are down there in the oil, it's out of any, any harm's way. There's nothing to get stuck on it there. That's the high and low gear. Box really is a nice condition inside. No visible signs of wear or damage anywhere. I do run a really good spec oil in it. That brake rod clutch is working fine. Now I'm going to put the top back on. Then I'm going to take the chuck off and machine a little bit off the register so I've got a little bit of wiggle room and see how good I can actually get that clocked in. Just an RTV seal around there, that's all it, all it is. It had gaskets on, it gave loads of problems leaking. Uh, I put the RTV on and it's been no problem, the RTV's gone hard, it just seals up against that. The only place it leaks is out of the tumbler reverse change wheel, there's a little drip coming out of there. But apart from that, it's it's pretty good. See the oil runs round there, splashed into there, and then goes down that hole into the bearing. 